Welcome to the End of the Road podcast. Each week, we select one, from several hundred, stories about the Great Lakes region and the tip of Michigan's thumb. These are taken from, thumbwind.com and presented here so that you can listen to it anytime, anywhere. This week, we will be covering two shorter stories taken from Thumbwind. The first is about the Port Austin Air Force Station that operated in the Upper Thumb during the Cold War. The second, is about the Thumb's first major industry in Grindstone City. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's story from the end of the road. This week's first story, the history of the Port Austin Air Force Station. A little-known fact is that Port Austin was part of the Cold War defense since the 1950s. The Port Austin Air Force Station was one of 28 stations built as part of the second segment of the Air Defense Command Permanent Radar Network. Prompted by the start of the Korean War, on July 11, 1950, the Secretary of the Air Force asked the Secretary of Defense for approval to expedite the construction of the permanent network. Approval was received on July 21, 1950, by the Defense Secretary. The Air Force directed the Corps of Engineers to proceed with construction. The radar station was placed into operation in 1952. Over the years, the equipment at the station was upgraded to improve the efficiency and accuracy of the information gathered by the radars. Initially, the site was a ground control intercept, and an early warning mission. In 1959, the Port Austin radar station was transitioned to a semi-automatic ground environment, or SAGE system. The site was updated again in 1965 to a backup intercept control system or Buick. It remained a Buick until the station was closed. The site came under tactical air command control in October 1979 with the inactivation of Aerospace Defense Command, and the transfer of the site to Air Defense, Tactical Air Command. In 1982, the main bearing of the search radar failed, catastrophically. The FAA long-range radar, located in Canton, Michigan, was utilized as a temporary, data tie site, until a replacement search radar could be installed at the base in 1983. The site remained in operation until September 1988 when the base was completely shut down. Today, the site of the former Port Austin Air Force radar station is an economic zone for various industries. It was also the former site of the Port Austin Bible Campus. It's now owned by Huron Castings, the county's fifth largest employer, and it will be used for worker housing. This week's second story, History of the Thumb's First Industry at Grindstone City The history of Grindstone City, starts with a ship seeking shelter from a lake Huron storm. The schooner, Rip Van Winkle, captained by Aaron Pier came into a natural harbor west of the Pointe aux Barks Lighthouse in 1834. After anchoring and securing his ship, the crew explored the dense virgin forest, and rocky beach for shelter, and firewood. This was a wilderness of cedar, pine, beech, ash, and maple. The tall cedar canopy was so thick, that snow remained in places, even though it was midsummer. The men came across huge flat rocks lying about the shore and forests. Captain Peer took some of the pieces of this flat stone to Detroit. They found the samples to be impeccably suited for paving streets, thus replacing the Ohio flagstone as the preferred surface. It's said that this stone was us ed to pave a few blocks on Detroit's Jefferson and Woodward Avenues. It was later used as foundation material on several buildings in Port Huron, Michigan. Within a couple of years, Captain Peer and his crew took advantage of the stone to sharpen their tools, and began shaping them into grindstones. Shortly thereafter, a small port grew from the natural harbor as his men worked inland, bringing the sandy abrasive stone out of the forest. Grindstone City became a boomtown. In 1836, Captain Peer purchased 400 acres of land to establish a grindstone quarrying and manufacturing operation. The area that Peer discovered this abrasive stone with its fine grit, was unique to the tip of Michigan's thumb, and part of the Marshall Sandstone Formation. The stone is easy to work with and ideal for shaping. Peer and his team built a horse-powered grist mill to make grinding wheels and whetstones. The company produced grindstones. These stones varied from small kitchen grinding wheels to large grinding stones weighing three and a half tons or more. 
the largest stone ever turned out weighed over six tons. Demand for the large sharpening stone soon earned the upper thumb the nickname of grindstone capital of the world. The company town, started with a stonecutter grist mill, and grew with a wharf out into Lake Huron. In time, two quarries, company store, and office headquarters building were made. A salt block was built to extract salty brine and evaporate it. The operation produced 125 barrels of salt each day. By the 1870s the first railroad was built into Grindstone City to offer less reliance on ships. Grindstone City became a fast-growing industry that produced the largest and finest grindstones, scythe stones, and hone stones in the world. New Technology Dooms the Town The boom town days were numbered, as a new technology was developed. Carborundum was discovered in 1893 by Edward Goodrich Ixon. This silicon powder has a crystal structure like that of diamond and is ideal for cutting, grinding, and polishing. Economical to produce, Carborundum started taking the place of grinding stones, and the quarries could no longer be operated at a profit. The Grindstone City Quarry slid into decline from 1900, and ceased operations in 1930. Grindstone City today lures tourists, fishermen, and those seeking the cottage life. Today, Grindstone City is a vacation destination and retirement community. Remnants of the town are still visible. The general store is still operating as an ice cream and gift shop. The church is now an art gallery. The former headquarters and offices of the quarry operations is now a charming and restored ice cream parlor. You can walk on the long pier that once took the large finished grindstones to ships via railcar. Grindstone City is also known for sport. T.S. Fishing on Lake Huron. Charter boat captains take anglers out in the big lake for salmon, lake trout, steelhead, walleye, and yellow perch. Massive grindstones can still be seen along the shoreline of the long vacant pier that juts out into the lake. The natural harbour still looks as it did in the 1830s when the first grindstone rock was discovered. Finding Grindstones Today Grindstones can still be seen on the shore north of the city. Abandoned stones have littered the beach for years. People started to pick them up and use them as lawn decorations at their cottages in the upper thumb. Today, only the largest of the old grindstones remain along the former pier. This concludes this week's two special stories. We hoped you enjoyed them. Thank you, for taking the time to listen to Thumb Winds, End of the Road podcast. If you like this kind of story, you are invited to join our 15,000 other monthly visitors on our website at thumbwind.com. Please watch for, and download next week's story and take a moment to subscribe to our podcast and give us a review. Have a great day.